That guru. Yes, I am the guru, but this person is a bigger guru in his field. I said earlier that he's a barrister lawyer. Would you like to use the two words together? Not barrister, the singer. Now, I can say this in his presence because I know he's jovial. This is the part that you don't hardly, you hardly see. You don't see him all the time in this. You see him as the workaholic, the, uh, the one that sees to everybody's problem. I, I want to ask him. This is the first question I'm going to ask. I'm not even introducing him. I'm asking him a question. Sir, who solves your own problem? When you solve uh, our own problem all the time. God solves everybody's problem. I don't think you solve anybody's problem too. It's God that solves everybody's problem. You won't know, you know, solve through somebody else. Don't believe that it's God that has sent that person. Not actually the person. That's uh, my own idea of the whole thing. Nobody can solve another person's problem except for them. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Louis Banire, S-A-N. Congratulations, Festa, on that great um, achievement. It takes a lot. It means your works are now speaking for you. I I'm sure some people will say it's been long overdue. We know you to be a man of um, astute intelligence. You're a scholar per excellence. When you speak, walls tremble. When you pick up a subject matter, you actually drill it with information and intellect. Sir, uh, coming from where you're coming from, for those who don't know, Dr. Moïse Banere, you grew up in Mushin, right? Very, very so. Okay. Can you tell us how the boy from Mushin became this enigma that is a pillar of an embodiment of wisdom and then a character that is filled with so much information and, you know, disseminating a lot of um, wisdom along the line. How did that boy, that boy, become this man. <clears throat> you see, Mushi, contrary to the impression people have about that place, that place is full of several cerebral people. In fact, I often remark that uh, Mushi is capable of feeling successfully. The entire cabinet of Lagos State with competent people. Wow. The only thing is the aberration in view of the historical origin of the place, particularly the political incident of the old uh, Wild West. Okay, okay. That gave that particular area the impression that people are still carrying over to today to say, ah, much nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Uh, no, I don't believe so. A lot of great people, in fact, so many successful people will trace their route back all the way to Mochi. Take for example, uh, Mr. Fola Adela, for example. Ah, true, true, true. We have so many other ones there from Mochi that I can point to. In fact, most people will always trade their route back to Mochi in one form or the other. Even the governor of Ocean will ask him, he will tell you he started from Mochi and he holds some other people like that. So it's a wonderful place to be. And one other addition that you get by way of what I will call supplement when you grow up in motion, is what is called courage. You are, you are fearless. You can stand up to any challenge, any day. That's one thing that a lot of people, particularly knowledge. somebody like you from uh, Ikoi, VI, and Who, uh, that? you people from those areas Who? might not, <laughs> <laughs> might not have. But uh, it's something that we enjoy. You find a lot of us extremely courageous. And uh, I believe that's one thing apart from the other aspect of educational attainment that we have as people from that particular local government. Well, boss, um, the way we see Ms. Banere, mm, he is that man that we, we try to pursue, but we don't think we can ever meet up with. You have been a commissioner, um, twice as a um, transport commissioner, then uh, commissioner for environment. Uh, in every terminology, if I put it right, you are the one who structured our transport system in Lagos. You gave us better transport system. You are the one who beautified our environment. And then you left. 
and then we can see that at some point maybe because there was something you did and i really need for you to explain it on this program how were you able to come the madness of all these our streets downfall drivers and their hooliganism how you see like i said to you apart from the fact that i'm a lawyer that's an advantage secondly i grew up with mushy local government giving me the necessary courage to be able to face the challenges and one of the ways we successfully did it then was the, the reduction in the first instance of the number of unions then I remember when I got to the Ministry of Transportation, we used to have up to about 19 unions, constantly fighting each other, constantly causing the end over the old place. The first thing I did was to say, look, I'm not going to tolerate this. We've got to reduce it to two. One for the employers, one for the employees. Wow. And I put in the policy that of course there were a lot of agitation, some took us to court, we met them there. <laughs> <laughs> we were able to reduce it to two. Road transport employers and national union of road transport employees. So, oh, that was your handbook, sir. <clears throat> yeah, we reduced them. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the man. So, beyond that, again, was that uh, we introduced traffic management, particularly setting up an outfit responsible for that purpose, that is Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, LASMA. And uh, of course, what we did then with LASMA <coughs> was to empower them properly. And then I say empower properly, not necessarily in terms of logistics alone, but equally training. We were able to train them well. When I was in uh, that ministry, apart from local training, we developed uh, capacity for them outside the country. Practically every year I used to take out a minimum 15 of them abroad to different countries to learn how traffic manager was being done, particularly the aspect relating to COSI. COSI? COSI. COSI. And now they should relate to the public people. people. Yes. to be members of the public. We used to teach them that. And, uh, oh, and of course, it gave me that period, I recall the video that was enough motivation for them. For example, I set up uh, what we call, yeah, I don't know whether I see that way, but I doubt it. We call it Asad Alawan. Because, for example, we were a graduate there. I was sitting in the office. My contemporary was on the road. I can't justify giving them the same salary. Okay. So I decided to create what we call them Asad Alawan, which was 25% over and above the basic of your contemporary in the service. That's number one. Number two, the wow. one. We also created uh, a special insurance for them. Apart from the general insurance of all civil servants, there was a special insurance for last month officials. So that in the event that you ran into any incident or accident that actually affected you one form or the other, there was special property of fly via the special insurance key again. Wow. Then again, the rule of law was totally open. Totally, and I mean it. You can ask anybody. Nobody could violate the law, contravene the law around to any public official during that period. <laughs> and very it's not possible. And the good news was that during that period, I recall vividly that the governor he said, I should have better myself that president. Because uh, I recall that Mama's driver, Mama's driver, driver, the driver went to drive against the flow of traffic and the vehicle was arrested. <laughs> and they sent the ticket to me in the office and I took the ticket and I said, okay, fine. I went to the governor's office and I said, Excellency, I understand my mother never <laughs> drove against the flow of traffic and they were contravening and they brought the ticket to me. They find then I think it was about twenty something thousand, twenty five or that about. And from that you have to pay. So I went to the ticket and and it took me the money and I went to pay and remit the debt. That went to me. I don't have a letter of our former government. <laughs> Somebody left me was under there, wrote me a letter that, that you had. And I took the ticket, the fine ticket. I took money from my pocket, went to pay. I wrote the letter. The letter said, I received your message. I paid for the ticket. The entire is the receipt. And I sent it back to you. Obviously, you will come back to me. Definitely. You expect me to use my salary ultimately to be paid. Definitely. So, we were very, very fair. We 
the ones that I know, I don't know that if anytime you put a signpost and they removed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was part of it. Well, that was like put the signpost somewhere and it got missing. The nearest bus stop or the bus terminal there, they were to contribute and place it. <laughs> and they were doing it. I remember in the government too, all the places that we planted fish, I wrote there specially. <laughs> if any of this is missing, you'll be responsible. You have to be responsible. Go, whether they look like it. Let's go into this lot. That was. Too. I, I went, at the last time I left the motor lead all the way to Tollgate or that. I think so I got up there lying both sides of the street. Successfully. And that was the kind of I think you see what is most important is that those who all subscribe to the rule of law and you uphold it will be fine. The law continues to be the king. The challenge we have in our system, which we have to eliminate quickly if we must reap the benefit of change, is that we must see everybody as being underneath the law. Nobody must be above the law. <coughs> because what comes in, where the law ends, what happens? Tyranny. Yes. Begins. That's true. So all of us must have, once we are firm on it, if you need my own driver that has done what is wrong, I must pay the penalty. Okay, so people will find that if your driver goes against the law, you're supposed to, uh, perhaps the first time. You don't know the enough. Then, but after then, do the right thing. Perhaps you should start driving yourself. 